Nat. Hi, my name is Josh. And welcome to the Slim Flat presentation. So the aim of the presentation today is to develop a co-branding strategy using the Unity of the sub-brand SlimFast, linking the proposed sub-brands together in order to establish a new product concept, uh, using secondary research based on both companies, Unilever and Nestle, to identify segmentation, targeting and positioning of the new co-brand. And finally, a SWOT analysis will be conducted on the proposed co-brand in order to establish the possible success of the product in the given market. More as a conclusion, we'll also state our findings. Okay, so SlimFast starts the product line of the Thomas Medical Company in 1977. Um, it was founded by Sir Daniel Abraham in 1940. He used to sell the controversial weight loss supplement, Detrochin. The brand SlimFast was then later privatised in 2000, which was then acquired by Unilever. The product has three distinctive areas. The original, which is the shakes only. The low carb area, which was made in response to the Atkins diet and the South Beach diet. And the current, which was simplified to the 3-2-1 diet in late 2009. The USP is as follows, on the go neural replacement and the body program. Looking at the Boston Matrix, which was established by McDonald's 2007, this allows the company to analyse its product portfolio. With high market share and high market growth, we look at the star bracket with respect to slim bass, that's the convenient snack market. Then we look at the problem child bracket with high market growth and low market share, which is slim bass protein bars, therefore our co-branded product will be in between the two segments. <coughs> Now, looking at the weight loss industry, diet and weight maintenance, there's a good reason for this interest in this market. It is according to the World Health Organization, obesity is common in industrialized countries and average weight correlates positively with economic development. For example, more than half of the adult population in the US is obese or generally overweight. In Western Europe and Australia, 40 to 55% of people are overweight and up to 25% of those people are considered obese. Additionally, obesity is on the rise in economic developing countries such as Thailand, India and Indonesia. Uh, so our co-brand proposal is SlimFast and KitKat together to make SlimCat and that is what the brand will be called. Uh, just a bit of background on Nestle. The company Nestle was established in 1866 by founder Henry Nestle. Nestle is the world's largest food and beverage company and they employ over a quarter of a million workers. And Nestle invests over £43 million pounds per year for the protection of the environment in its factories, with 30% of this being applied to water areas in the world. Kit Kat is a well known brand of Nestle, and it's the top five consumed UK chocolate and USA bar, chocolate bar. Kit Kat's bars are very available in 16 countries worldwide, and it's the third best selling chocolate bar in the world. So, our Nestle SWOT analysis. Uh, the strengths were the market leadership and the diversified portfolio of brands, also the commitment in research and development. The weaknesses were an over-reliance on the mature market and also a small number of distributors. Opportunities were the emerging markets, which were India and China, and increasing demand of healthier variants of chocolates, and also e-commerce. The threats were a loss of competitiveness to rivalries that expand into international markets. Uh, increasing entries of private labels and also the rising prices of major raw materials needed to make these products. Prior to combining parent brands and potential products to co-brand with, we constructed figure one in order to take into factors that affect co-branding and what lead to positive brand reaction amongst consumers. According to the different scholars, we concluded that high brand awareness and brand association lead to positive evaluation of co-branded products. On the basis of these findings, figure one shows the model of co-branding Co-branding that can explain evaluation of co-branded products. We adopt these findings in order to find the most suited product slash parent company to co-brand Unilever with. So, proposed co-brand. Uh, the reason behind it was both parent companies had similar visions. Obesity is a worldwide problem and it needs to be tackled. Research that we have done on the chocolate itself is chocolate actually has weight loss properties to help you lose weight. It also helps prevent memory decline and it also helps to prevent heart disease. And obviously taste is very important when it comes to eating chocolate and we have to make sure we got it right, which is why we chose Kit Kat as a sub brand because Kit Kat, well, plenty of people enjoy eating Kit Kat, so it was a pretty, pretty obvious choice to go for. And moreover on what Josh has just said, going to Bazio, 1986, a person is more likely to access attitudes related to a brand that is more sanar. Basically, people are more likely to buy a brand that is already established and essentially has a good reputation as opposed to a new product in a new market. 
Therefore, with two strong, well-known products such as Kit Kat and Slim Fast, people are more likely not to hesitate to try the new co-brand product, Slim Cat. Uh, so Slim Cat's goals and objectives, uh, we, we aim to achieve a 20% return on capital employed 24 months after launch. Uh, we aim to gain 50% market share within the weight loss industry by the year 2019. We aim to increase awareness of Slim Cat by 10% after the first year. And we aim to survive the economic downturn and also to increase the size of operations after 12 months. We also aim to make Slim Cat the preferred brand for a larger target audience. We aim to target the product SlimCat for consumers who are health conscious and individuals wanting to lose weight. From the above data, it can be concluded that mass production approach will be the most suited for SlimCat. Essentially, this includes mass production, mass distribution, and mass promotion. The parent company, KitKat, is aimed at mass market, and SlimCat is aimed towards a more the niche market. However, due to our efforts drawn towards including co branding and our variances in the target market, we realise that SlimCat will have to adopt this strategy, the same one as KitKat's. Um, in order to gain market share and high volume sales. We intend to use a differentiated strategy in conjunction with the cost focus strategy. With reference to SlimCat, the product has a competitive advantage due to taste. SlimCat is differentiated due to taste factors and aiming the product into cost focus bracket allows SlimCat to have a great exposure in the market. Akin et al. 2006 challenges Porter's concept regarding mutual exclusivity of low cost and differentiated strategy and are further argued that successful combination of these two strategies will result in successful competitive advantage, um, which can be sustained. For this reason, we aim to target two segments, those that desire to lose weight and that are health conscious. So the positioning in the market for Slimcat is a high quality product with a low price tag. This is the initial start of Slimcat and eventually we will actually match our price tag to be with our competitors, for example, Weight Watchers, uh, who are actually a high quality and high price uh, company. So in time, we will match our prices to be alongside Weight Watchers, but for now, as we start up the company, we will have it slightly lower in order to gain new customers and potentially take customers away from Weight Watchers. The main factor affecting promotion is seasonality. Research suggests that SlimFast's current revenue generally decreases at year end during summer months. The operating income for the first year of the is generally the strongest, and the first quarter of the fiscal year typically results in the greatest revenue, treating the importance of winter diets. Kickout is also affected by seasonality because of the product lines that change during seasons such as Christmas, Easter, etc. Um, as a result, SlimCat will adopt advertising strategies from both companies with particular focus on the different, uh, different seasons. Uh, so our competition, as I've already mentioned, Weight Watchers. Our other, our other competition is Medifast and Atkins Nutritionals. Uh, our biggest focus of the product will be in America and our product will also be available in Europe and Australia. Uh, the places you can buy the SlimCat product will be in supermarkets and local stores as well as pharmacies, for example, Boots. Also, looking at the theory by Robert James Thompson, he conducted an extensive pilot test with the three competitors, Weight Watchers, Medifast, and Atkins Nutritional, and realized that SlimFast has a competitive advantage due to the taste factor already, um, and also it's a better product, and therefore that's another reason why co branding this product with KitKat was essentially the right idea. <coughs> now looking at the IMC, um, integrated marketing communications, the coherence as part of the aspect um, will be SlimCat's brand message will remain the same in the worldwide markets. Consistency, the consistency of the message will work well across multimedia campaigns from TV ads to billboards, online adverts and magazines. The continuity after the launch of the SlimCat product, the ads will continue with creative execution to make sure that our brand is well recognised. Complementary with it. We intend to use Facebook and Twitter as a hub to amplify customer interaction, so showing customers feedback to SlimCat. Uh, so, as I've already mentioned again, Weight Watchers, they've actually priced their five chocolate biscuits in a little pack at 99p in supermarkets, and we will start our pricing at 89p when we launch in order to undercut them and hopefully still some of their value customers. Baldrin uses Marxist lens in analyzing the society's obsession with consumerism. Products do not add value, rather provide satisfaction from owning a brand and indulging in buying 
and luxury buy behaviour. Um, the self-image is projected through specific signs, such as products, and also reflect one status symbol and individual's location in society. From this, we gather that across the globe, poor people are supposedly bank conscious, and therefore, if you want to aim slim cats' prices at the bottom of the pyramid, so people are less people with less disposable income are able to buy a well-known brand, hence feeding the society's craze for consumerism. Uh, so slim fast finance, um, you can see we have it over the last four years. Uh, 2014, 2013, 2012, and 2011. You can see that their gross profit over these four years has stayed reasonably the same. From 2011 and 2012, it actually increased a little bit, and 2013 and 2014, it's stayed the same. With SlimCat, we believe that we will be able to boost SlimFast profit margins along with KitKats because it's a product that is needed in the market, and we believe that it can really explode if it's done in the right way. As you can see from the graph, KitKat was the third highest selling chocolate bar in the US, generating sales of nearly £145 million, and it's the third best selling chocolate bar in the world. Um, looking at the United States, we realise that KitKat's finances are always steadily increasing, whereas SlimCat's is very static, and therefore new product invention such as SlimCat will help both the companies essentially and give the market something else. So SlimCat's finance, uh, we projected that SlimCat will make 20 million sales uh, in the first year. Um, we've also predicted that the net profit for the first year will be around $5.7 million at the selling price of 89 cents. And as I've already mentioned, eventually we will raise the price to 99 cents. But as we start, we want to get it. Uh, new customers and also still customers from our competition. Alright, so the SWOT analysis for SlimCat. Uh, the strengths were two strong parent brands enabling greater exposure for SlimCat. Most people enjoy chocolate and it's an everyday product. It's possible to extend strategies that can be introduced to SlimCat. Uh, the weaknesses were that it's extremely, extremely competitive in the chocolate in the chocolate market, and a new chocolate bar in the market may uh, people may not be willing to try the product. Uh, the opportunities are that it can potentially reach new customers, and we could possibly possibly be the dominant chocolate bar in the market. And the threats are obviously other competition, for example, Weight Watchers, and competitive uh, price pressure. If for some reason they decide to drop their prices to try it on the class, that would also be a problem. So we have to keep on top of everything. Okay, now looking drawing towards the conclusion, co-branding two products using ingredient brand names is not purely on the basis of profit, but an approach to reduce the risk factor on a joint venture country for new market. The presentation showcases the co-branding slim fats and Kit Kat potentially boost sales for the company Unilever, but also brand value. It's pointed out that this co-branding creates synergy from both parties. For KitKat, co-branding is helpful to explore the weight loss market that is increasing the market share for the confectionery bar. The SWOT analysis of KitKat, sorry, SlimCat, supports that by far the most significant key factor of success is the internal strengths which contribute to the well performance. It may also be the reasonably concluded that by co-branding Unilever and Nestle, both products will gain advertising scope, financial scope and customer satisfaction, hence repeat business. As, hence repeat business. <coughs> when two powerful brands support each other in backing a co-brand, this successfully embodies a brand position by acquiring customers' preference. According to Blackland and Russell 1999, the aim of the joint venture co-branding is based on long-term cooperation. Uh, just to summarise our conclusion for SlimCat, it's a healthier alternative chocolate bar, it's reasonably priced in the market, and it's a mix of two well-known product, uh, two well-known brands, so people will be more inclined to actually try the product. Uh, the focus will be in the USA, however it will be available worldwide, and it will be a high quality, low price product. Uh, it's aimed at the mass market, and it has huge potential to be the market leader. Thank you for listening to our presentation. And here are our references and the end.